Hi everybody, welcome to this final round guide for Expert Division in the 6th Anniversary 9-Hole Cup here on the BK Golf Clash YouTube channel. Hope you're doing well. Uh, please give me a thumb up on the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Click that bell button as well, you will get notified when we upload new content. Live stream tomorrow, that is Sunday 9pm UK time, end of season party stream with my special guest Golf Clash Tommy. Pop in, give your feedback on all things Golf Clash related. Replays and adjustment for all nine holes coming up. Loads of drops here. Take a token or two, tweak if you need to, and adapt according to your skill level, clubs and balls that you have available. Plenty of good chances for drops, so let's get started with hole number one. A nasty wind angle on this par four. We're going to start with the quarterback at power three max distance with a blue ring touching the rough on the left. Then we switch to our APOC and sniper bag. 5.8 top spin, two bars side spin to the left. So we're going to play with the king maker, cut this wind down as much as we can. And then we're going to adjust max plus 10 power three settings. So we're finding our position with quarterback nine plus. Doesn't matter about ring references with the APOC because we're using the QB to set up. So max plus 10 uh, takes me to plus 12. I'm going to go without any overpower. If you've got APOC 4, you might need to adjust uh, to play with some overpower. Go with whatever you adjust into, maybe one or two rings, depending on the wind. No curl, just we get a nice drive distance here with a nice roll down the fairway, 325 yards. Second shot, you can either do a rough check as I'm doing here, uh, plus one with the bullseye over the rough in line with the pin, or you can count rings from min. Both are going to be fine because this is a true club distance adjustment. So um, I cropped the video a little bit rather than waste your time. I counted up my rings from min in this instance. We're going to play uh, with around one backspin and one right spin, but it might vary depending on your drive. You can see I've got a couple of clicks more than one backspin here, but you want to find that sticky spot with a blue ring just before the rough line. Ball guide is going to be deliberately offset to the right of the pin because of the wind angle. So rings from min plus zero elevation, or you do rough check if you want to do the rough check, which is probably quicker than counting up rings from min. Plus one with a sniper 10 is going to be 35%. On the slider zero elevation that will be plus three if you have sniper level nine of course perfect ball away and this will bounce over the rough very nicely and you want to track into that funnel and uh, you'll drop it very nicely for um, an eagle even with this tough wind angle on this par three we're going to play with the goliath once again and we're going to add spin first we are going with um, six bars of top spin three bars side spin to the right and you want to avoid the glitchy parts here and try and find a decent point to set up you can see i'm just changing my position here trying to move forward and in the end i settle with the red ring touching the bunker on the right and a little bit of the red ring kind of half of it outside the rough and onto the fairway that's with goliath nine you'll see the ball guide is going slightly through the hole even though we have tailwind the reason I do that is because this adjustment is going to take us into the bunker, which will cause us to lose distance on the shot. So that will be counteracted by that. Max plus 15 power two settings here. I would recommend you keep the wind below eight miles an hour if you can. I've not tested this in higher winds. So if you've got a wind four ball handy or a practice token or two, that will help. You may, of course, need to put some wind angle tweaks, but max plus 15 power two falling very nicely. On to a par five now, I would recommend that you play with a power four wind three ball. If you can, it will help. 5.8 top spin, three bars left spin. You can do this with a king maker, let's just have that said, but it will be a little bit tougher to get the drop. Top of plus four yards with APOC five plus, blue ring touching the rough with APOC five and six. You're gonna set up at the top of plus 10 if you've got APOC level four. So we've added our spins, finding the position. We're going to adjust max plus 15. There is a little bit of headwind angle here. You'll see, look at the plus yards. We're starting at plus four, making our adjustment here. And we are pulling up to uh, top of plus 15. So it's almost into OP, even with APOC 5. Regardless of OP, 
I'm going here with two rings. So go with that as your default OP, two rings. If you are just into any overpower, add that on as well. APOC 4, you will need to add on. You're looking at about four rings with APOC 4. So that's why the power four ball helps. We're getting a drive distance here of around 370. Second shot, we're gonna make a fringe check playing very similar to uh, as we've done in other wind angles here. Where the where fringe meets the green, bullseye directly over that, plus four with grizzly nine is plus seven with grizzly seven and eight. And we're gonna go with just over one bar of top spin, it's about 1.2. And you can see I'm using one bar of left spin having the ball guide offset to the left of the cup. So I'll give you a zoom in here. The right edge of the ball guide is touching the left edge of the pin. Yellow ring, uh, sorry, left edge of the cup, of course. A yellow ring touching the rough line there with the grizzly. The good thing about using a power four ball, if you get a dead bounce on your drive, you're still going to have a bigger range of plus yards to make your fringe check. So it just reduces the chance of having to guess a little bit on your second shot. For a plus four fringe check, FC on the notepad, we're going 72% slider, 10% elevation. Hitting perfect here, and this one is going to catch the rough very nicely. And uh, this one falls for the albatross. Not often I show you a wind five shot here, but it is the best chance for a hole in one. However, even with the wind five ball, you've really got to take some tokens and get a feel for this one. It is a risky shot. If you don't fancy it, play the bounce over instead with the grizzly. So it's one bar of backspin, three bars side spin to the left. Really important to find the position here. And I take my time over it just to make sure I'm in the right part. You will see a little bit of the yellow ring outside the rough line once I've found my position. There you go. And I'm going to zoom in on the ball guide now. Ball guide to pin. This is pull angle sensitive and it is needing wind angle tweaks. But I've deliberately showed you an example here with highest wind with a wind five ball. Uh, so 6.3 here, we're gonna go min plus five, power one. Bear in mind though, this shot is not great safe in my opinion, and you may need to put some wind angle tweaks in. You can see the ball guy just disappears there when it encounters some collision with the palm tree. So it is very, very tricky, like I said. Take a token or two. If it's not for you, don't go with it. There is a safe bounce over for the birdie. But if it works, it's a brilliant chance, albeit a very aggressive one for the hole in one. On this par four, we're gonna play with 5.8 top spin and three bars side spin to the right. You want to aim in the middle of that strip of fairway there at the top of plus 10 with the APOC five plus bullseye in the middle. You will be at P3 max rest with a POC level 4. We then adjust maximum distance, 10% elevation. So max plus 10. It will take us down the slope here. Although it does increase our plus yards, we adjust to a lower point. A POC 4 might need a bit of overpower here. With a POC 5, I go with a circle break overpower. And then you can see here, I'm using a one and a half ball of curl to the right. So when you add your curl, circle break, it's looking at about two rings, the tip of the needle there, by the time I've dragged the ball out with the curl. APOC four will need to add on to that, make sure you get enough distance on this one, because you want to be in max range with the thorn. Drive distance, 365 or thereabouts. We're gonna play rings from max here, rather than rings from min. So uh, just have some charts handy. There are charts on the Facebook group. Download Golf Clash Rings Bible. If you haven't got it, there's very good charts there as well. So find max distance, add your backspin first, and then count the number of rings from max needed to have the ball guide as shown. You want to aim between the bunker and the fringe with the ball guide going about three quarters of a green square through the pin. So just rewind this one if you need to, get the steps correct. Now, I've put a reference on the notepad, 10 equals 83% slider to give you a guide. So moving 10 rings away from max with a power three ball is equal to 83% slider. So you can use that to estimate if you want. Pull over the bullseye, going with 10% elevation. If you don't want to do rings from max, you just estimate your true club distance as best you can. Perfect ball away, bounces very nicely, and the backspin takes us in for the eagle. 
If you're enjoying the free content here on the channel and want to send a token of thanks, you can do so in one of three ways to support the channel. You can become a channel member, you can use the PayPal link in the video description down below, or finally you can click the thanks button which is just below the video here on this page. Time to go aggressive on hole uh, number six here, and the more top spin the better. If you don't have APOC 6 plus, play with the extra mile level nine. Okay, so we're going with uh, seven top spin here and side spin to the right with a berserker at P5 max with a uh, bullseye in the middle of the fairway, adjusting max plus 10. The wind angle here is really too good not to blast it in my opinion. It's worth a go, even with the extra mile nine. I think you've got room for a great left and great right. We're pushing back up to max even with the APOC here. Extra mile nine, you might get uh, a few yards less distance. We're going with 1.5 ball of curl to the right. The problem with extra mile nine, you may not have that curl. I don't think you do. You might need to set up a little bit further to the right. So you could take a token or two, but you want the top spin here. Send it shots, always uh, a little bit of a lottery and might need some tweaking. But from there, 488 yards. Uh, this one left me about a 90% end bringer. You can see there I'm measuring my distance where the hole stands. We've got a tutorial video on the Enbringer School on the Academy playlist, if you don't know it. It's a no-spin shot, ball guide to the hole, but this is slightly uphill. So instead of 20% and the power ball that we're using, I would recommend here you go 10% elevation, but you're going to use power four numbers. That's what was working for me with my setup. Like I said, you might need to tweak it depending what driver you've got. And what top spin you've got, you might need a top spin boost ball as well and to tweak depending on your curl. So here is one setup to use and tweak from it if you wish, but an Embringer there very nicely for the Albatross. Nice wind angle here, you can send it with a Berserker, but it's a little bit risky. So I'm going to show you a layup with the rock. One and a half top spin, three bars side spin to the right, max distance with rock level eight, top of plus 15, with rock level nine. If you're worried about uh, higher winds or adding too much top spin or inadvertently overpowering your shot, then I would dial back the top spin to about one or 1.2 bars. You don't really want to be uh, rolling into the rough or the sand. However, with tailwind, you would still most likely reach the green in two. Max plus 15 on this one, aiming down the middle, with spin added, as you could see there from my setup. Perfect ball away. We like the rock for the accuracy and the ball guide. And you can see here, even with the uphill slope, we're parking up just before the rough. Drive distance, 339. Second shot, making a fringe check where the fringe meets the green in line with the pin. Plus one with the Grizzly nine would be plus four with the Grizzly level seven and eight, playing with three bars of backspin. Then I find my position here. You want to have the ball guide short, as you can see here. And you want the top of the blue ring touching the rough. So a couple of references there, playing this bounce over. And then we're going to play for a plus one fringe check, 46% slider, 15% elevation. The good news about this uh, wind angle is it's pretty much straight tailwind, so there is a little bit more margin for error. We'll see how this one comes in, though, with a perfect ball. Bounces nicely on the fairway, second bounce just before the fringe, and that offset worked a treat, dropping it right at the pin. On this par three, we're going to find the funnel with our top spin added and our left spin added as well. You can see there I'm using five top spin, Half a bar of left spin. Find the little sticky spot funnel with the red ring, top of the red ring on the left, touching the rough line. And regardless of your sniper level, you're gonna play it one to one. So whatever your wind is, that is gonna be the number of rings. So if your wind is 7.8, as it is for me here, you're gonna adjust 7.8 rings. If your wind was 8.2, you go with 8.2 rings. A plain ball shot, no overpower, just hit perfect. Very nice funnel here on this par three from Meadow Castle. Catches the rough very nicely and we're tracking beautifully for a hole in one. 
par five now from the Oasis. We're going to play with the APOC and the Kingmaker, and we're going to go with a 5.8 top spin and no side spin. 5.8 top, no side. Plus 10 yards at the top of with uh, APOC five and above. You can see there the red ring is touching the uh, rough line there. Actually got it at plus 11. That is a mistake. I only wanted it at the top of plus 10. And it's just ticked over there. But rest assured, the top of plus 10 will be fine. P3 max with APOC level 4. And then we're going to adjust max plus 5 on this one. Max plus 5. And then taking our shot with inner wall curl to the right in this instance. Perfect ball away. Bouncing on the first fairway. Taking us over the rough onto the second fairway and we get a nice roll out here drive distance is going to be around 363 now the number on the notepad here is a tweak because I sadly just missed this one fringe check of plus seven uh, where the uh, fringe starts there in line with the pin two and a half backspin and then we set up finding our position here and I'm going to give you a zoom in on the ball guide here. You want it just passing the right edge of the cup, going half a green square beyond the hole. So left edge of the ball guide, touching the right hand edge of the cup. Plus seven with sniper 10 will be plus nine with sniper nine. The tweaked value based on the miss in the video, 62% slider, 15% elevation. If using the slider is new to you, check out the Academy tutorials again. We've got a three part video series on that. It will improve your game play. Build it in slowly in your game. Get used to it in tour play and then build it into your tournament play. You will drop a load more shots. Perfect ball away. You'll see this one is a very close miss. Like I said, the tweak on the notepad and in the commentary should get you in for the Albatross. Thank you for watching this final round guide video. Don't forget to join us on Monday for expert division qualifying round content as well as pro qualifying round content for the Winter Major on the brand new Shifung Basin course. Finally, join us over on Facebook. That is totally free. BK Golf Clash Facebook group. Loads of members there sharing content, guides, shots and discussion points as well. Get involved. I look forward to seeing you over there. Good luck, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.